today, uh, we've got a, a new face in the in the room here. Um, Janita Sin is is here. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and and uh, uh, maybe I should introduce her properly and uh, seeing Janita, uh, because uh, although she's joining us from Chiang Mai, uh, Thailand, she is uh, Cambodian. She's a Khmer lady who has an organization in Thailand called Edsol Technology. And what uh, Nita has been doing is developing uh, quite a library of ebooks. And uh, there's opportunities for those ebooks to be available to any of us in the CLLC group that has interest and in, in use for them. Um, so I thought that in order to make that decision for us to figure out whether we should make the investment with, with uh, Edsol that it would take to make all of that available, we ought to have an opportunity for, for Nita to uh, take over the screen and the meeting and show some examples and just talk us through what, what she has to offer uh, to the group. Uh, books are in both Khmer and in English, also in some other languages, but we'll focus on Khmer and English for now. And Nita, that's, that's uh, I think, enough to get you started. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. We're, yeah. we're, we're glad you're here, so I'm going to let you take it from here, introduce yourself, share the screen when you're ready, and uh, uh, spend 30 minutes or so uh, talk about what what you're doing and uh, uh, give us a good overview of that and then we'll have an open discussion and some questions and uh, follow on from there okay thank you <laughs> all right so to everyone <laughs> and yes good morning mm -hmm. and happy new year <laughs> so thank you very much to um bill and bong Paul for arranging this opportunity. This is a big party we have. I did not expect um, this many people and it's great to see all of you. Okay, um, yeah, so for uh, this morning, I have some slides to you know introduce to you about Mojo eLibrary. Um, so yes, as Bill has done a bit of um, introduction about our work, we see that our work may align with uh, the work of your organizations because we focus on education and technology. And um, yet to go with the introduction, uh, because we don't have much time, I will share the slides and introduce uh, our work and Mojo eLibrary along the way. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free. I don't want it to be a boring lecture. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Well, this is a very this is a very polite group, but I'm sure that if somebody has a burning question, they will they will ask you. Yes, that's good. <laughs> okay, so yes, um, so I am Cambodian, uh, and we actually first started this in Cambodia as a trial as well, but. Um, Yes, but uh, we are based in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and um, but you know our work is online. We work from home, our team, so there is no limit in um, you know in launching our work in different countries around Southeast Asia, and that is our target area anyway. Uh, so. We, we are called Edsol Technology. Edsol is education solutions. And um, we, this uh, for today, it's primarily about our first app, Mojo eLibrary, but we actually develop um, different applications, you know, that are, uh, that can support students in the primary and secondary level in their education. And uh, yeah, so we focus on Southeast Asia. We see the need here. So like Cambodia, Thailand, Laos, Myanmar, Vietnam. So this is how we hope to expand our, our work. Um, so yes, we focus on education and technology and a bit more introduction that, uh, so I am the founder and the chief executive officer. And um, 
But with these two focuses, I cannot do coding or develop software. So I'm more on the education side. Um, so with my experience in education, I uh, used to be a teacher for my first job. So I finished bachelor's in education in Cambodia and then became a teacher at Australian Center of Education for four years. So yeah, I have the uh, first-hand experience in teaching in the classroom with students. And um, after that, I got a master's uh, a scholarship to study at University of Cambridge in the UK to pursue my master's in educational leadership and school improvement. And after uh, finishing my master's and then expanded the field from teaching to working in NGOs, um, so I found this you know, NGO in Chiang Mai that focused on education and support in the Mekong sub-region. So I got to um, expand my experience in understanding the challenges and the opportunities in education in, um, in the Southeast Asian region. And um, so, yeah, so now it leads to this um, projects that we do. So um, about Mojo eLibrary, so this is for primary education, grade one to grade six. Um, so this is a multilingual digital library, international standard. And so I would like to explain to you today that because, you know, we have so many e-libraries out there, you know, like, um, yeah, they have digital books and for children to read. So what makes this a uh, necessity and how we have brought this to international standard is, first of all, we use, this is the first graded reader program in Southeast Asian languages. So by what we mean of graded reader program is the library is graded into 30 levels. And I'm sure in your experience, there are many different e-library programs out there. And what we have come across is there are libraries that might not grade the books at all. You have a collection of digital books and then, OK, children, read these books. You know, these are the resources for you. So you have some that do not grade into levels, just a collection of books. Or you have some major libraries that only grade to three or five levels. Um, so this, we take on the international uh, program, the structure, you know, the framework that we grade the books to 30 levels for the students in grade one to uh, year grade one to year grade six. So this is like a long term reading activity that they can advance through the levels. And we have also developed originally Mojo level placement test. So we want to tackle the problem that, so we have the books, they are graded all the way to 30 levels, so it is extensive. And we want to respond to um, the readers or the students' individual ability. So by doing the level placement test, which is available on app, a smartphone app, and on the website also, um, they can take the children, the readers can take a few minutes and then to answer the questions to get the result of what level they should start at. Um, so, you know, because we have a lot of challenges, like, like in Cambodia, I'm sure you know very well, even in Thailand, just in Southeast Asia, like the survey in Cambodia done by the Ministry of Education in 2020, which is very recent, is that 50% of third grade of third graders are poor at reading. And about 40% of seventh graders in secondary school are poor at reading. So when we say poor at reading, we are talking about unable to read <clears throat> or unable to read or sorry, able to read but fail to understand. And then we have able to read but understand only a, a little. So this is the statistics that we're dealing with. And from UNICEF, we have 25% of third graders that cannot write a single word. You know, so this, the poor reading performance, which leads to the statistics that says that by age 17, 55% drop out. 
So we have a high percentage in primary school, 95% go to grade one, that's great. But by secondary school, 55% drop out. So this is very urgent in what we try to help students develop a habit of reading, you know, an independent reading. And um, so this is why we bring graded reader program, which is practice and popular in um, more developed countries like in Australia, UK, uh, New Zealand, uh, America. So bring this graded reader program and make it available. We have it in English, it's multilingual, so we have it in English, but importantly, we have it in Khmer, we have it, well, in Thai, in Vietnamese, so the students can read in multiple languages. Um, okay, so this is the idea of the graded reader program. And what makes it a comprehensive reading program? Is, so with the 30 levels, we have 100 storybooks for each language. And um, the books have been contextualized to Cambodian or Asian culture. You can see or browse through the books on the apps. I'm not sure some of you might not have downloaded Mojo eLibrary yet, but you can do so after our meeting. Um, so from our research, it is very important that usually with lots of um, reading material, they can be avail available in the Western context, you know, in available in English language and the Western context, like the, the appearance of the characters in the story, the activities, the places they go to, it's really in the context of Western culture, which, you know, just theoretically, and practically, the students find it harder to relate to these stories because stories they need to imagine, you know, and if, if it is the characters looking like them and their friends, uh, you know, they can understand the context easier and they are more interested in, in, the, in the stories as well. And each book, uh, we have developed original comprehension questions. So this is you know, it's very important for the students to test their knowledge, uh, make sure that they understand what they have just read. Um, so yes, we make sure that every book at the end of the story, we have the comprehension questions. And on the app, it is interactive. So they can answer the questions, click to respond, and then, you know, automatic results pop up to tell them their scores. And also, we, besides the books, we have developed read along videos. So this is for early beginner readers, level one to five. Currently we have 25 videos, but the way we work is we do it in a modular way. We develop step by step. So we aim to increase the number of books, the number of read along videos. Um, so just continue having more materials, more choices for the students. And um, to bridge, because, you know, we have a very small opportunity when we want to motivate students to read because they are so used to, um, you know, just after school, they run home and watch TV or play games. And so to bridge this, you know, to make them interested in reading, we want to develop video books where, um, bring them a sense of like familiarity of video like watching tv but reading the words as well so these are like kind of the initiatives and ideas we want to just make it just facilitate uh the children being interested in reading as a part of their life and another thing uh which is um yeah important for organizations, our partner organizations, and for schools that we work with, we have developed um, monitoring and evaluation package for the program as well. So as the schools and organizations take on Mojo eLibrary for the students to read, you know, we have a reading progress assessment program. So this is another thing that goes beyond what is available in the education system in Cambodia. Um, it's, um, there are 18 sets of tests of assessments. 
Um, so fully complete from grade one to grade six. So there are 18 because we prepare um, three assessments per year at the beginning of the year, in the middle and at the end of the year so that um, the organizations can assess and you know, monitor the progress of the students reading activities. Nita, may I, yeah. may I interrupt with a question? Sure. Um, uh, all of this, these programs that you're talking about right now, very interesting. Um, are, are those programs in English or Khmer or perhaps both? Both. So all these graded levels are available in English. They're also the same stories, I presume, but in Khmer. Exactly. Exactly. And the questions and the assessment levels are both for their English comprehension and their Khmer comprehension. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We make sure that all the materials, all the books are in uh, multi-lingual uh, standards. So they are available, <clears throat> the same materials in all languages. Thank yeah. you. Okay. And... Um, Another thing in this comprehensive reading program is we also have monitoring reports, but this function will be ready by the end of this month. But what is exciting is that uh, we can provide reading progress data tracking. So when the students uh, use the app, uh, use yeah, Mojo eLibrary on their smartphone app, we can track um, the their beginning point of what level from the mojo level placement test what level they are at with their individual ability and then um, the number of books they have read the comprehension questions from when they first start and how it progresses uh you know as they go through the levels so uh this is for the adults for the uh, managers of the schools and organizations to have access to this uh, data tracking, uh, the summary reports, and then can have the overall picture of the student's progress in their um, reading skills. Um, okay, so this is an out of school fun reading program. So this is how we introduce pleasure reading in a structured way. So um, when we introduce this to schools, being out of school, it is a great advantage because that means it is not a necessity. We don't require the teachers to put in their time to try to allocate the students to read these books, you know, or uh, you're in this grade, you go and read these, uh, and do these assignments so it's independent the students can read anytime anywhere silently in their own time without the pressure without having to be as the teachers having to set assignments for them to read um, so they can just download and from our research you know we focus on software because we can see this is very accessible the one of the most accessible ways in uh, allowing students in rural area or in the city, wherever they are across the country to have access to the app. And yeah, from, from our research, we can see in Cambodia that almost 80% of people have access or can use smartphones in their household. Because even in the rural areas, they can use like Samsung or Oppo, you know, some brands of phones that are quite cheap that they, they because people like using Facebook and everything now. So they they have access to smartphones to download the app um, and uh, they have access to Internet. But if they don't, we also have the function to download the book to read offline as well. So we try to facilitate this for the schools in remote areas as much as possible. So um, at this point, do you have any questions about the program? Why don't you show just one or two pages from one of the books, just so we can see sure. what one looks like, Nita? Definitely, yes. 
So I will show you from the website, um, but you can also download into the app and you know go through explore mm -hmm. by yourself as well. Uh, I think I shared just a particular screen. Sorry. That's all right. While you were while you were speaking, the uh, crowd has grown. We're now up to twenty two people. So you have oh. a <laughs> crowd. Here. Who came halfway across the presentation? But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they'll, get, they'll get to see the uh, they'll get to see the real book right here. Yes. So um, we have a website dedicated to our apps, but now it's a mojo that you can check out. Um, okay, so on the website, you also have like step one, um, which reading level is, uh, should you start at? So this is where the students can come and, um, yeah, answer the questions. So let me just show you quickly. So we do this into sets. So like, for example, a first grader, if they make any mistakes, in the first set. So let me just. So the results come out telling them these are the levels that you should start reading at. So they can click on that. And so this is the importance of the graded reader program and coupled with our placement test because then it's like these are the books that you should start reading at so click to start reading books at level four so these are the options that are right targeted to your ability you know this is the opportunity for them to start reading accurately because if not they would start reading books that are too easy or too difficult for them and then it's like uh forget it i'm going to watch some tv you know, okay, so, why don't you just open up who can help me and just just uh, show me what that book looks like. Okay. So I think I need to move this. Just, a just a couple of pages of it. So this is level four. It's like a, about for level for grade one. So images on every page. So this is in English. And then at the end of the story, you have the comprehension question. So we have the comprehension in the books and also, um, yeah, with the answer key at the back. But on the so app, you have English, a- But presumably the same book is there in Khmer. Yeah, so this is in Khmer. So you just choose to change the language. Oh, sorry. So the same book. So yes, that was level four. Yeah, and then okay, with the... thank you. That that helps me see your product a little more clearly. Okay. Um... Okay, so it's uh, categorized by the levels like this. And um, this is the reading progress. Uh, we have featured it on the website. So schools presently can click to open and download um, the assessment materials from here. So this is in Khmer, as you can see, like for grade one, um, there are three, three phases. Um, so just a quick peek to the program. Oops, sorry. So this comprehensively um, test, like in grade one, it tests the students of their vocabulary, um, their understanding of spelling and uh, reading sentences and to reading text. And it, the complexity progresses, the type of questions progresses according to the level from grade one to grade six. And you also have it in um, English as well. Sorry, here we go. Yeah. 
So it's the uh, same layout, same structure for you to test across the languages, across the levels. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, let's open and see uh, see who else has a question for you before I ask you two or three more. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, if you uh, stop the screen sharing for just a moment so that I can yeah. uh, I can see the screen full of smiling faces. Sorry, wait, wait, wait. That's all right. Okay, there we go. There we are. And so I'm I'm happy to recognize a, a raised hand from anyone in the group that might have a question at this point. Hi. I have Hi, a question. Hi. Hi. No, please, please. Two questions actually, do apologize. So one is for the test that I just saw there, is that something that the teacher could download and then hand it to the students for them to complete? And then for the results, is that something that I would document and send to you for your, um, your reporting? Or is that something that I would document and keep the data myself? Um, for the reading assessment program, it's mm -hmm. done offline, it's done off the app. Okay. So um, yes, it's the process that the schools uh, can manage by um, downloading the documents, the assessments, and then mm -hmm. have the students do it and then record the scores, you know? Perfect. Um, yes, so, um, but for the data that we track and it's mm -hmm. automatic, so that is done on the app with the activities, reading activities on there, um, but you know, in the future, um, mm -hmm. because, you know, automatic might be the most convenient way, but in the future with more support, then we hope to digitalize the test so that it's interactive and mm -hmm. then the data can be stored in our monitoring report as well. But fantastic. currently, this is how it goes. No, perfect. No, that's absolutely fantastic. No, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for clearing that up. Thank you. No was, that, was that two questions or one question? Yeah, my second one. I'm so sorry. I haven't yet downloaded um, Mojo eLibrary. I will mm -hmm. uh, free download. And can you just do it from like Google Play or do I have to do it directly from your website? Oh, it's available on the stores. So you can download. Um, yeah, if iOS, then you mm -hmm. download from App Store and for Android, you download um, from Play Store. Perfect. Yes. Oh, available. amazing. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good. Thank you for those. Uh, who who else has some questions? Uh, okay. Before we take the question, Lita, I just I mean, I just want to make sure is it all right now because um you share to us the um, what is it the user users and a password for like mm -hmm. advanced level. So is mm -hmm. it still all right for us to share to our team now or you already um, that? Okay, so on the app, on the app right now, it still functions the same, but we are going through some upgrades. So very soon, um, when, you know, for our partner organizations or schools that, uh, yeah, partner with us, uh, we will produce the uh, sub subscription code, like school code. Um, so this is for security reasons as well. So then when you enter the code, when you register, then you have access. Uh, it's not just to advanced levels, but the premium content. Mm. Yes. So then you have access to everything by entering the code. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, got it. Got it. Just wonder yeah. whether the code, uh, the reason code that you uh, provide um, um, is still the valid. Code, the reason code, it works on the app, but it doesn't work on the website now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, because on the website we have uh, developed, we have changed, upgraded to mm -hmm, like you mm -hmm. have to enter the code to see it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can see the same materials on the on the web. But if you know currently when you're still making decisions, uh, but on the app you can still use that username and password. And on the website you can contact us and then we can send you the code. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah. Just for my clarification, uh, uh, Nita, uh, yeah. as, I, as I remember from our conversation when you and I visited in Chiang Mai, uh, yes. 
you have two levels. You have a free level and then you have a more advanced level that isn't free, that's available to the people who have partnered with you. Is, is, am I remembering that correctly? That's correct. Um, yes, that's why I shared with you the username and password before. To so, you, so we could see it all. Video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, now with that username and password, you can see all. Yeah, that's you very generous of you to, to <laughs> share that in advance with us. Thank you. No worries, no worries. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure you have the full idea. So for the app, the free app, like anybody can download and you have access to 100 books but it's still within the same structure, but we want to make it easy for schools and organizations to try using it for free without any time limitation and see what we have in the structure. Um, but then, yes, you know, to uh, sustain our work, we also have the school subscribe to our app. And so when they subscribe, they have access to both our free and for premium, but for partner organizations, you know, after the support, then you have access to 100% of the free and uh, premium and without any time limitation. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Other questions? I saw a hand up. Shaylon has a hand up. Yeah, thank you, Bill. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sister Shanita. Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Uh, I have already a download and the app from uh, that teacher uh, that sister support said us that uh, I test some uh, some uh, lesson but and uh, some and then how the uh, video reading but uh, some and doesn't have uh, yes <laughs> so uh, so I think that uh, if that uh, the lesson and all have the video reading, I think it's a very benefit for the student. <laughs> we think so too. <laughs> um, especially for grade one, uh, level one to level five for grade one, yes. right? Yes, so the students yes. at that time still um, struggle to read, to spell, to yes. pronounce. Yeah, so yeah, we, we need to do it step by step as we can afford to like with support from our donors you know um and this is our plan so now we have 25 and we the next we have package to develop more with the support that we may have in the future you know yeah to develop more videos for the students that is in our plan definitely <laughs> So this is a work in process as far as uh, EDSOL is uh, technology, your company is doing. Exactly, because the way we work, you know, like based in Thailand, we have partner organizations in Cambodia and also in Thailand. And like yeah. the number of books, it's like, okay, we have donors interested to support developing more books or like more videos. And that is how we can continue as well. So what is great is that now you can start using the app with uh, the materials available that has been funded already, you know, and then with more funding, you continue to have more materials, have access to more materials on the app. So it keeps increasing like this. Yeah, but what is important now is we can see that the foundation is established and the holes that our current education in Cambodia or in Thailand, the flaws that they have, we fill in the holes with what we have right now. So it's ready for the students to, to use right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank other, you very much. Other, yes. questions, <laughs> other questions? Thank you, uh, Shailan. Yes. Well, I, I have another question while, uh, while we're waiting for you to think up some of your questions. I, I'm thinking about an organization like uh, you know, Human and Hope, uh, where Salin, he, he's in here, uh, Salin is here. Uh, also thinking about Anjali, and I know uh, uh, Nadi is here, even though she can't show her face today, but at least we can hear her voice. And uh, uh, but, so, but in both of your organizations and probably some others of you as well, uh, Makara, maybe at ABCs also, 
you're you're teaching your the same group of kids you're teaching them in english you're also teaching them in Khmer, i think uh, and how would how would you see books like this books fit like this to your um uh, your i could see that uh, makara yeah yeah i could see that yeah yeah i heard that i had some question as well but it was uh it was that was asked by uh zoo already so it can be downloaded downloaded through the app or play store so it will be easy for all of my teachers so that they can use especially with the test or with the reading right now we only uh, provide english and for our Khmer lesson we already can solve so we come back to our normal uh, education program english only so this would be useful for our students with, that right now we have like seven classes with over 150 students but you're focusing on really english english is your focus at your school but now salen uh, you're you're teaching both Khmer and english are you not to your to yeah your... yeah you take both Khmer and english and how would how would this fit or not fit in your organization yeah we i'm just thinking about how we can apply in AHA as uh, it's a bit in rural area. So regarding to using telephone or mobile phone, it's a bit difficult for them because it, it need to need a phone or something to to log in something like that. Yeah, you would need a phone or a reader or or something. Yeah, I could I could see some appeal to having it the same book. With the same pictures, both in English and in Khmer, yeah, uh, might might have some appeal. Um, so just a, a further <laughs> question to uh, Wong Salin, to Miepsu Wong Salin. Yeah, so we understand your concern that uh, schools. Uh, this is in what province, may I ask, the students? In Siem Reap, in Sambua Commune. Yes. Okay. Um, so because we work with uh, similar remote schools over in Thailand and experience in Cambodia also. Um, so yes, we understand that in remote areas, there would be some percentage uh, that do not have smartphones, like their households, their parents, uh, their siblings do not have smartphones. Okay, so they don't have access. But um, for this one, you can use, I guess the website might be difficult also, but we also have kind of a guide to support the schools that are very remote. Um, so like you can download the books and then print them out. Can be black and white is also fine um, because you can still use the structure of the levels of the test, you know, for the students to read at the right level to their ability. But there is also percentage that the students themselves don't have smartphones, but their parents or their siblings do. So they can use that at home because it is out of school. Um, and so I think like the schools in the province here, um, you know, they they like if we just think of like oh the students are poor and they are remote so they might not have smartphones but um uh, if we can do research like the survey to really see it might be surprising uh, because like the schools here they got like after doing the survey they found out like 50 percent of the students have smartphones at home have access to smartphones so that is still 50 percent more that can have access to this app conveniently or it can be 20 or 30 percent but it's still 30 percent more so yeah um have you have you ever done survey like this with the schools uh actually during covid we have tested the online classes yeah. for both english and Khmer, and yeah uh just i think around yeah, as you said, 50, 50, 50, they cannot That's get right. access to online, 50, they come yeah. to get the handout from teachers. Yeah, 
So that's great. You know, 50% is a lot of like, yeah, the students having access to this at their home. So it's great. You uh, you might have answered a question that I have, but I'll verify it here. I was, I, I was in a conversation uh, just yesterday about somebody thinking in terms of a uh, a, a physical library mm. that was really a hybrid library, hybrid with physical books and online books. And the question came up then, of course, can we print these books? Do we would we have a license to print these books and make some hard copies to go in our library for those that didn't have uh, electronic access? And do you put any limitations on that? No. So as mentioned earlier, yes, there is no limitation. You uh, have the rights, you have the license to print out the books uh, and then for the students to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Question? So oh, sorry. <laughs> Zoe, yeah, did so you? I did, yeah. Sorry, I didn't know if you were moving on. Sorry. <clears throat> That's all right. We've, we've got time. So talking about people that have a phone in the family. Sorry, Zoe, I can't hear you. We can't hear you. Can, cannot hear you, uh, Zoe. We yeah, were hearing you until you pulled your earplugs out and then we yeah. seemed to lose something. Okay. Now we can, can hear you, you again. <laughs> No, not hearing you now. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. I do apologize. All right. Um, uh, I was curious, does each student or child have an individual username and an individual password? Just yes. in case everyone's sharing like the same device, is it going to be clear to see which child it is that used the computer or used the phone, which one it is? Um, so on the mobile app, the smartphone mm -hmm. app, when they first start using the the library, they need to register. And so when they register, they put in information of their school, their mm -hmm. grade, and we will add class also, and then yeah. their name, their age, their gender, um, and then they create their username and password. Okay. So we collect this information so that, you know, we are able it's not sensitive information. It's nice. the age, the gender, so that we can compare and analyze their nice. reading progress in the monitoring report. So yes, they do have their individual accounts. So Perfect. three three kids could use one smartphone nice. as long as they log in individually. We'd have three records for three kids on one yep. smartphone. Oh, Fantastic. that's right. Thank you. Good question. Thank you. Other questions. Mr. Sonat? Matt? Yes, um, good morning, Anita. <laughs> yeah, good morning. Janita. Okay. Yeah. Um, you talked about reading for pleasure. Can you elaborate this a little bit? Okay, I mean, the topic of your books and how long or yes. how difficult, I mean, the level of the reading for pleasure. Sure. Please. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Um, yeah, so reading for pleasure, the books that we feature in the library, they are storybooks. Storybooks, uh, you know, the, the topics or the themes, they can be about adventures, um, going to different places, uh, having fun doing different activities with their friends or their family. Um, but so it can be fun adventures uh, where they learn about friendship and love and t solving problems. Um, some also have the topics of environment, you know, <laughs> um, so like just different understanding, but we want to make it fun. You know, just make sure that they can laugh and enjoy the story. So this is not textbooks. You know, they are not like supporting materials for the textbooks of the formal curriculum. <laughs> we want them to, when they read, it's like they watch a movie. <laughs> so this is what we mean by pleasure reading. Um, and the, the app, it can facilitate fun 
independent reading because you know from the very first step if they for example they are in grade three we don't tell them that kids in grade three you have to read these books you know because you're in grade three because the levels as we know are very different we have just researched that third grade some of them cannot read at all so they may start from level two three you know but some who are very good can start level 10 or something so they do the test by themselves they get the level and then they go to read the books in those levels and they advance by themselves and and yeah just they don't have the pressure from like oh this is my homework this is my assignment it's not like that it's um it's a, the kind of reading that they can read by themselves not in front of the class and just enjoy the storybooks yeah like a real neat yeah yeah now, now you just raised a question in in my my mind and sita i'll get right to you in a second uh, uh how long are these books uh what particularly when oh, yes. we get up to an adventure story at, at level 27 or somewhere okay. up up there uh is it so, am i going to read that book you. in three minutes or is it going to take me all day <laughs> it depends on the level um <laughs> so like for for level one uh we have you know from with the within the structure we have the number of words the number of words like uh, for the low levels to the high level that mm -hmm. is standardized. And the way, there's, I will show you the books in a bit so that you can compare the length of content. Uh, so like in, in level one, you can get like eight pages and like 50 words. And then you get on to level 30, which can have about 40 pages. Okay. And with like 1,500 words. So the length, the complexity, the vocabulary, it advances <clears throat> by the level that, in a that standardized way. That, that answers it for me. Yeah. Sorry. I think I missed because most of Sanat also asked. Sorry. I forgot. <laughs> no, you're doing fine. Sita, Sita, you have a question. Thank you, Bill, for giving me that great opportunity to ask. So. Yes, first of all, I'm really interested in your program. And Thank yes, you. and I noticed that at the moment you mentioned about the children have difficulty with reading. And yep. also they need to find the, the, the relevant level mm -hmm. yep. for the course books for them to read. And I'm asking, so can or do, do you have the program that you can just click and then the book will read for you and the students, they can listen and learn how to read that way or you, all your books, the students need to read by themselves. Um, that's that's an, yes, that's an interesting question. And it has been in our plan. Um, I think, so it's a great function, but primarily we want the students to be active readers. Um, but this for the for the lower levels for the lower levels where they still struggle in reading and they um so yeah in the future because it is quite advanced like it's automatic you know having having the voice read to you i mean for the read along videos like uh bong shailon had checked out um they do read for you you know these low levels uh, and we do want to develop more videos so that we can uh, have give more options to the students in the lower grade. Um, yes, and to bridge with the video books. But um, yeah, our goal is like to facilitate to bridge that, but have them become active readers and not mostly just listen to the audio. You get what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I see. I see. But sometimes yeah. when you, you have what different options. Yeah, it's it's a nice option, Sita, but I'm also thinking about your wonderful mobile library program, where uh, where you take the books in a in a box uh, suitcase out out to the village schools, and mm -hmm. you know I've seen the pictures of the kids surrounding your tuk tuk and and then all going off and reading the books and then reading them out loud and reading them to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, it. Uh, uh, yeah <laughs> you you already have a lot of experience with kids learning to read without having the book read to them don't you i think yes 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 
but I'm thinking about, because based on my experience working with young learners, I noticed that if we have more options, more skills for young learners to, to learn, it will be great for them because children, they have different yeah, learning styles and different learning perspective. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm asking. Yeah, no, that is a great feedback and from your experience, you know, because we do see, I mean, we are dealing with um, the culture that they are fa not familiar with reading or they are not interested in reading. They are not encouraged to read by their families. So if we just give them the books, um, you know, like for them to like change from watching TV to reading these static books, we do need that bridge. And that's why we are looking into read along videos and these video books that we don't have them now, the video books, but we want to do it for the higher levels, like maybe from level six to level 10. So yes, it is. Uh, and we would like to hear feedback like this, you know, what the children really, how they react to reading like this. And we need to be practical, yeah, and facilitate accordingly. Good. So thank you. For yeah. That's Thank you very much. Excellent question. And uh, Marty, I, I think you have your hand up. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Monica, for sharing us. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing us a very great resource of reading and to improve our reading for people. Thank you so much. Um, my I think my question, it might be like um, repeated a little bit to the others. Um, my first question is about the reading. Of, a long video when we use like we change the language from english to khmer do you have yes. the same thing that the grade one to grade three that you have the reading a long video yeah so it's uh it's level level one to five and that's oh. right we do have um the same books the same videos in khmer and in english so they can switch between the languages okay for both yes. the reading and for the listening then. That's right, yes, because the read along videos, you have the audio that mm -hmm. reads out the books for you. And we kind of do it as karaoke style yeah. <laughs> with the music in the background and the text so the students can read along. Yes, both That's languages. Good. Okay. Any more questions, Maradi? Right. And then another question is about the lock-in. When I see the lock, like, for anyone who want to register, you have like three options. You want to know whether they are students, parents, or teachers. So what is the purpose of doing this? Um, then it's like we can, so for teachers and for parents, the process of registration is different. For teachers and parents, you only need to put in your name. Uh, your full name and then you can create your username and password and then you can go in and see you know the materials we have uh the structure in the library as well so we want to make sure that the teachers and parents also have access um but yeah without having to put in the same information as the students um and but oh, it, 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 it is the students that we do the tracking of their reading activities yeah what do you um, think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much because I think uh, what you do uh, purposely is you want to get like to gather the information about the student and also easy for monitoring them. That is why I, I want to know the different. Yeah. Yeah. So that it's not mixed and, up with parents and teachers. <laughs> and teachers. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for clarification. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for the question. J JV, I see your hand up. Good morning again. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just want to, to uh, congratulate you because it's a really uh, amazing work you're doing, I think. Thank you very um, much. I have a question regarding the design of your books. Are you, do you have a team designing? Are you designing all the materials that you are presenting on your app and, and website uh, with your team? Or do you uh, have some collaboration with other specialized team in this in this field and this brings me to another question which is uh, are you able to include not maybe now but in the future books that are not designed by your team i'm thinking about books from sipa organizations uh, which is also um, working in the field of library and, and reading uh, 
uh, since we are starting, I hope this year a project a bit larger than what we did uh, next year in, in with with uh, Southeast Asia. We would like to explore these uh, opportunities, and and I think your project plus what is CIPA doing could be a very good base for us. So I'm um, yeah, basically those two questions are are interlinked and and to see how we could develop them on our on our field. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so yes, we are open because actually for the free free content that is open for everyone, we also work with all children reading Cambodia um, and Let's Read. And we also have books from Room to Read that are featured. So we work with them and to feature the books on the e-library as well. Because um, with our expertise in education, we do research and we develop apps that you know adopt or adapt um, the international standard framework but we we are not authors to develop these books you know so we turn to the expertise uh, of people that are authors but we are a publishing house and we develop um okay so for the books uh, yeah so the free content you will see that some of the books are uh, shared um by uh, with from all children reading Cambodia, let's read, room to read. Yeah, so a mixture that we select the interesting ones and then we put it into um, our program, but standardize into the graded reader framework. We add the comprehension questions um, and then yes, the Mojo placement test that is all in our program. Uh, and yeah, and then we also select um, international book series that are high quality and very uh, popular uh, among children as well and then uh, we modify uh, our team we do have like drawing artists and we have um, our translators we have our uh, yeah content development team to modify the text to make sure it is contextualized to Cambodian and Asian context so um, with your um, prospects of featuring SIPA books into our e-library, li e that goes with what uh, we have been doing as well. So yes, we, ha we have no problem with, with that. Looks like Nat has another question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, JV. OK. Uh... I have one last, I think, question. Oh, you don't have to be last. You could keep it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, but before I ask the question, let me uh, elaborate what we've been doing here a little bit. Um, well, our organization, uh, TDSO, has been running um, a project, a reading project, OK, uh, just a side project to our uh, classroom activities. This is called Dear Project, Drop Everything and Read. Uh, we have seen this um, very successful, but we struggle a little bit with uh, the collection of materials. Uh, we have two main phases. Um, the first phase, um, students are exposed to the little short articles of different topics, such as science, uh, health, okay, uh, people profiles, such and such, such and such, okay. And the second phase, um, students have to read book, okay? So uh, articles after some time and then they move to the book, uh, reading or book presentation. So what do you think uh, your, I mean, your end uh, can help solve our challenges in terms of collecting materials, articles, short articles or books? Um, so let me clarify, this is still about working with the materials that you have developed. Yes, yes. So do you think um, what you have so far uh, can fit our needs? Um, so, so uh, are you thinking of like, so you have developed books and articles, and are you interested in like featuring those materials 
into Mojo eLibrary? Am I understanding correctly? No, no, no. I'm, 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 we are, our team is collecting, you know, uh, different uh, articles from different resources. Okay. okay. Short articles, something to do with, let's say, lightning, something to do with vegetables or mm -hmm. health, okay, from, from other sources. Okay. And we are now also struggling uh, finding the books, okay, for our uh, dear kids or uh, dear team to read. So if we happen to, um, let's say, subscribe or to partner, okay, with your team, do you think our expectations can be met? In other words, or simply put, can we get some uh, 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 short articles of different, I mean, varieties and short books, okay, which should be, uh, or which fall into the world of children, I mean. Um, okay, so this is in the case of um, expanding, expanding the the choices or options of materials that you have, and mm -hmm. how can you uh, make use of the materials that we have, right? To expand the options in your program. Yeah. Um, so yes, I mean what you're doing, the materials that you have developed, that's great, and being partners to um, to our work, then you have access into um, the library and you can download the books, which, um, yeah, they do bear, you know, uh, which I think they, they these are fun books. So they're in the form of books so not like articles to just mm -hmm. provide information, but, you know, for the children to read and have fun with the stories, but can also um, learn at the same time. But we don't want to make it obvious of like, OK, you got to read and you got to learn these things. It's just something that they take in along the way. Um, and the topics uh, you can browse through the books, you know, as through the levels we we introduce uh, different topics. So you were talking about like health, environment, um, or like learning about animals or vegetables or fruits. You know, it's all kind of mixed in the different books that we have. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, but in this kind of a more fun um, kind of topic or content to read. What what do you think about that? Well, um, it's interesting um, because what we've got to do with our kids is to, uh, to, to assign them to read and they've got to come back and do the presentation after they're reading. Mm, yeah. So then we want to get them exposed to a variety of, uh, I mean, uh, topics, say um, they should know something about science, they should know something about health, they should know something about the vegetables, such and such, such and such, okay. So, instead of, you know, going or Googling uh, those documents, as you may imagine, is not really uh, well uh, ordered, okay? Mm -hmm. So can we just, just in case, I'm talking with my team, work with you to, you know, to, um, to pull out or to, um, to get the materials we need, okay, uh, to feed our kids, okay? Um, yes, yes, I mean, the access to the materials that okay you want if the if the teachers or educators uh, at the organization want to assign the book so let's say the books that we have in mojo as their assignments and you know ask them to do presentation um, that that is fine you have the freedom to do that mm -hmm. you know but then with our program the students also have the time to kind of just pick the books that they want to read in the right level also. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you have the freedom to do that. The books already have the comprehension question. So if you want to make use of that feature, you know, and to give out quiz, you know, for the students, you, Nita, you can use that uh, supporting yeah, material I'm, as well. I'm, I think you might be missing Nat's uh, question just a little bit, and but it okay. does lead into a question that I wanted to raise <laughs> that will loop back uh, to what Nat is asking you about. We've got two of the organizations that are part of our CLLC, our Cambodian Leadership Learning Community, in which you're sitting right now. 
uh, uh, there's quite a few NGOs represented here. Uh, we've got at least two here today with us uh, this morning that are very active in working with the provincial, the Siem Reap provincial education at the primary school level and mm -hmm. improving the English teaching ability and improving the ability of English teachers to teach English in the more than 500 primary schools in Siem Reap province. And once that's successful and catches on, I can foresee this spreading to other provinces in Cambodia as well. So one of my larger questions is, if we get really engaged with you, and then you have two of these organizations that are working cooperatively with each other and with the government officials and not just teaching English, but teaching English teachers how to do a better job of teaching English in, in the primary schools. They may need some additional information that isn't already available in EDSOL or isn't already available in the Mojo plan. And so they might be saying, you know, Nita, this is cool stuff you've got, but we also need something else. We need something that does this, or we need something that does that. And so I'm just thinking ahead, thinking out loud that were we to get down the road a little ways with this sort of a program, uh, I can see where some of these organizations might come to you and say, hey, what you got's great, but we want a little more than that. How does that, how could that work? Okay, um, so I hope I can I can answer this um, correctly. Um, so with we're working with an organization in Thailand where they they have many other partners. They support other partners similar to uh, Southeast Asia Foundation, and um, they have asked us with our education expertise to develop um, you know just a different app. <laughs> that can be the platform to, um, first of all, to record the projects that they do and just put it into a structure that makes sense for the education programs. Are you, because within our, within our app, like for Mojo, um, we take in feedback, we take in comments um, that, okay, if we, like if the school suggests, oh, maybe this would make sense as well. Maybe could add this to Mojo. And if it is aligned, if it is relevant, you know, then we would consider adding it to the app. But if it is something quite different, um, but it's relevant to education, but it's quite different mm -hmm. to the apps that we produce, we could, you know, provide consultation or expertise into structuring. Um, but that would be a that would be a fee for service kind of activity. I yeah, presume. something like that. And from what my experience of, you know, working with the partners here, it's a different app. Is that, <laughs> is that what you were going for? No, I'm I'm just I'm just exploring and and picking up on what I hear Nat asking is that that what you got's cool. Let's, let's just take it at face value and say, yeah, your, yes. your uh, Mojo library is really cool. But what yeah. if we want more than that? What, what if we yeah. want some yeah. adjunct material to go with it? Is that something mm. that we're not asking for free, but is that something that, uh, that you would be in a position to partner with, um, mm -hmm. with the NGOs in this room that are interested with our foundation, with so Paul, mm -hmm. me, is is that something you could do on maybe a contract basis? Yes, we can look into this because, um, yeah, because we are open. We are open to exploring that as well. Because the important thing is, we as an organization, we already, yeah, we have the expertise in education and we have a team to develop software. The team now is based in in Thailand, but you know, with the design, um, uh, with the design of the program or how the software can come out, uh, yes, 
that's what we can look into. And um, from our experience, I believe we can support in that as well. Okay, the reason I'm asking that is because some of the organizations here are, are involved in teaching Kamai and teaching English and or to young learners. And they would yeah. find the Mojo, they would make their own decisions about the Mojo books, whether they, they fit or don't fit. But a couple of the organizations are really working at a level higher than that, uh, in that, that they're focused not just on teaching the kids English, but upgrading, uh, improving the level of English education that's available in the government schools, which is mm. a different job. And it may yeah. require more than just a Mojo library to do that. Yes, yes, because this involves teacher training and also different formats of materials like uh, Bong Sunat mentioned, you have articles as well, right? So that is not uh, the, the same materials as we have. No, that's more so, than more than just Mojo. And, exactly. and I'm, yeah. I'm anticipating that sometime about two, two, two and a half weeks from now when I'm in CM Rip, we're going to have five or six people sitting around the table and we're mm -hmm. going to be talking about organizations working cooperatively uh, to work cooperatively with government officials to uh, upskill the ability of government teachers to teach English in primary schools. And uh, yeah, I can see where, where uh, your Mojo library might be a tool for that, a tool. Uh, but, yep. Yep. but the question liable to come up, well, that's cool, but we'd also need some of this. We also need some of this. And uh, uh, so it might be a more active partnership than simply, oh, good. I get the key to, I get the key to Mojo. <laughs> you know get the key i drive the car and yeah. i'm all done we're all done yeah but it might be more than that we we might yeah. need a, we might not just we need some a little different design to the car no that's great you know that's great that you can see um with our focus that we can go beyond <laughs> to working in like supporting your projects as well because what is interesting is uh the partners here they are also digitizing their work because they have been working on this for like sometimes 10 years right yeah, and they yeah. have all these materials that they want to yeah probably digitize or structure in a different format to make it more accessible so this is yeah we we, we would be really interested to okay we don't need to speculate too far on that but uh, but i could tell from nat's questioning that that he's thinking down the road a little mm -hmm. bit not just about <laughs> mojo and no, that, it's interesting you brought that up yes <laughs> that is, does that get at some of your concerns also yes yeah, yes yeah, thank you very much okay, okay. Uh, because i haven't explored uh, the mojo mojo kind of uh, mojo e library mojo. because this is my first time to hear this to be honest and from, from my understanding just now uh, it's more about you know for kids to uh, sorry uh, yeah, for kids to uh, to learn English, but uh, we want to. Uh, I ask this question because 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 English. I mm -hmm, because we oh, sorry, also we'll train, next, yeah. we also teach okay adult okay or uh, yeah adult learners. So uh, then we want to expose them to different topics or variety of articles or or, or yeah. not the not I don't mean the journal articles. I mean the the texts okay or or passages of different okay topics yeah yeah um but yes uh i just would like to clarify that the objective of uh mojo is not to just teach english language but it's more focused on um enabling students to become independent voluntary readers mm -hmm. And we actually primarily we focus on the local language because we have all the materials in Khmer, you know, which other uh, large scale e-libraries don't have. Mostly they focus just on English. But yes, on our app, uh, it's multilingual, so the students can read both in Khmer and in English. But we see reading as the foundation skill for all subjects because if 
the reading, if they can't read or they can't write a single word, then it's difficult for them to study other subjects as well. So this is what we look at. And this is why we start with Mojo eLibrary before we work on other subjects or other apps. Yeah. Okay. One, one of my jobs in these meetings is to just manage our time. And uh, <laughs> your questions have been great. And I've let this uh, run a little bit long here. So, uh, uh, Nita, uh, before we before we let you go, I want to just poll the room to see if we have one last burning question uh, about Mojo Library and how it might be available. Uh, it, but I before I say, I want to say in terms of uh, next steps. And Salin, I see your hand up. I'll be right there. Uh, but so Paul and I will put our heads together after this meeting and we'll do a very short questionnaire, uh, which so Paul can send out to each of the people that's here in the room this morning uh, to get some feedback on this. And then we'll be in a position to decide collectively, uh, how do we want to move ahead if at all? So, uh, but I do, uh, I do want to appreciate the time that you put in here today and the time and the skill and the and the expertise that you and your partners have done to develop this material. And, um, and before we move on to the second half, which is going to be a short half of our, <laughs> of our uh, session today, I, I see Salina has got his hand up and uh, maybe he's going to get the last question in here. Salina, the floor is yours. Okay, hey, thank you, Bill. <laughs> And thank you so much, Janita, for your great presentation. Yeah. And just, I think the last question for me. <laughs> uh, do you have the introduction video? So that I think in this year, we can try to like apply the Mojo library in, for our system to see. Oh. Uh, because as you, you said, you have both for, we, we also can print out for the student who cannot have the, the mobile phone or the smartphone to use it. So I think it also is our goal to promote reading. We, also, we have a library, but at home, we let our students borrow the books, but we have a limited resource in here. So I think we can try to learn more about Mojo library and then we can test it if it works well, then we can use it for our program. Great, yeah. thank you. Yeah, great to hear that. Um, so for the for the introduction videos, uh, we have developed three video clips. So this is to introduce or to guide the users of the important steps. So like we have one for how to use the Mojo uh, level placement test, um, how to register, and how to find the books. So, um, so we have these videos that we can share. And we also have um, posters uh, that shows the guide and you know, the steps within the app. So to make it easy for the teachers and the students in introducing or rolling out Mojo app. Uh, do you think that would be helpful for the testing? Yeah, I think it would. I think it, yeah, we, we have the uh, online group with our student parents as well. So you like to, okay. if you have the video or poster, we can share with them. If yeah. they cannot like understand, our teachers can help. So I think the video or the poster will be useful. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, you know, the reason why we, we work with organizations and with schools so that at the beginning, when the students start using the app, they can use it in the right way because it may look simple, you know, uh, but there are steps to it that the students need to follow to get to the right books, do the comprehension question or do the testing. So it would be great, like, you know, for your organization or for the teachers to guide the students to how to do it accurately before they can start. It is an independent app, but it would be great to have guidance at the beginning. Yeah, yeah to use it yeah. effectively. Yes, great. Yeah. Thank you so much. 
Uh, no thank problem. You. So thank you, Salin. And, uh, materials, I mean, uh, I can send through Bong so Paul. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure of the sharing mechanism, but yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so Paul has put into the chat box uh, the uh, username testing nine and the password one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so that uh, any of you who are interested in taking a closer look at the material that's available uh, in the next couple of days, uh, you, you've got full access to it. Um, and then so Paul and I are going to ask you three or four questions about uh, what you, what you uh, have heard tonight. And then I think we need to make a decision as to how and when and, and uh, in what way do we proceed. So, Paul, any uh, any closing words from you here? So, Paul, you're muted. Yeah. Yes. You right. Yeah. Just thank you so much, Nita, for the information and continue open up those um, premium level for us to continue testing. I know we have been trying testing this for a while now, but you know it's a matter of like staff turnover in each organization so that not the same person actually uh, handled the email. Uh, so uh, hopefully this time at least um, more than 15 organizations in this chat right now uh, receive this and try it and then see how it works and then get the feedback. Thank you. Thank you very much for the arrangements and also for the, I see some really nice comments as well. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. Well, we, we appreciate uh, your joining us uh, this morning, and, uh, and we appreciate the uh, long effort. I know you, you didn't do this yesterday, that this has been going on for a while. <laughs> um, yes, I hope we can continue the effort. Well, and um, so, thank you. Thank you very much for so, your interest. It's so been a Paul great pleasure is, talking so to you all. A, it's been a great pleasure having you here. And uh, so Paul and I will be back in touch with yeah. you shortly. Uh, yeah. Oh, Shaylon just put a heart up there. Isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Paul Shaylon. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you. Luck, thank you, Nita. Good luck nice. with your great work and good luck for the new year as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Nita. Thank you, so much. Yeah. you too. Okay. Thank you, Dad, we have so that we have Leon and Rockney. Bye. Bye, Bon. Thank Bye. you so much for joining.